We're just a few days away from one of the biggest games of the entire college football season, and today you'll hear why Notre Dame has all the tools to pull off the upset against the Buckeyes in a crossover edition of Locked on Irish. You are Locked on Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Irish, your daily Notre Dame podcast. Today is Thursday, September 21st, and thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 or more infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And I'm your host, Tyler Wojak. But in just a moment here, I'm going to kick it over to Jay Stevens, the host of Locked On Buckeyes, for another crossover edition of the podcast. And I know what you're thinking, a Buckeye on the podcast in back-to-back days. Come on, dude. But honestly, I think you're going to be very interested in what Jay has to say about this game because he even caught me by surprise a little bit and how much praise he had for the Irish. But before we get to that, this is your reminder to get your mailbag questions in to be featured on Friday's show. I'm going to have Luke Smith back on tomorrow to help answer your questions, and we'll give you our final thoughts before the big game on Saturday. So send them in on Twitter, at Irish or slide in the Instagram DMs, at Pod. And now it's time for the crossover. It's the matchup we have all been waiting for between Ohio State and Notre Dame. And we are here to break it down here for you on this crossover between Locked on Buckeyes and Locked on Irish. What's up, guys? My name is Jay Stevens, the host of Locked on Buckeyes. And I'm here with Tyler Wojak of Locked on Irish. And we've got a big matchup this weekend. One in Notre Dame Stadium, South Bend, Indiana. Game day will be there. The Pat McAfee show will be there. And I'm excited, Tyler, to get in talking to you and dive into what this matchup will be for both teams. How you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Uh, every day is one day closer to Saturday, which is great because I'm I'm getting pretty antsy already. We're taping this on a Wednesday, uh, and I'm already starting to feel it. Last night, we kind of struggled to get some sleep, so Saturday can't get here soon enough. Man, man, you are correct. Uh, this game is one that when I realized there would be a home and home. Um, between Notre Dame and Ohio State. It's like one of those things you circle on your calendar. Didn't know Sam Hartman would be the quarterback for Notre Dame this year. That definitely changes things for the Buckeyes and for Notre Dame. Speaking of Notre Dame, what is the story of the team so far this season? Well, so far, it's been number 10, Sam Hartman. Uh, And especially considering what Notre Dame went through last year with the quarterback situation, starting off with Tyler Buckner, who suffered a season-ending injury, or at least regular season-ending injury, In that week two game against Marshall, we were subjected to the Drew Pine experience for a full season, which I'm going to tell you just wasn't the most fun. But this year, Notre Dame has, I think, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And it's you guys get spoiled having an elite quarterback every single year, uh, or at least it's been that way the last few years. But we're kind of getting it for the first time, and we're all like, wow, this is so much fun. So he's totally changed the dynamic of the offense, changed the dynamic of the team. And there's a raise like the bar has been raised for the entire team because uh, of Sam Hartman and how well he's been playing at quarterback. The schedule up to this point has been pretty light. I would say Notre Dame got their first real test against NC State on the road, had to deal with the weather delay in that one. And they started off slow, but then sort of put it on them, uh, especially in the second half. So this is obviously going to be Notre Dame's first real big test uh, in Ohio State's as well. So. It's been pretty good up to this point, but we're going to find out a lot about both teams on Saturday. I mean, you're correct. And um, the schedule for both teams has been pretty light. Notre Dame, I do believe, has played one more game. I think they're 4-0 at this correct. point of the season, which yeah. does give them a benefit. You have a better sample size. You know more about them as a football team than Ohio State. The Buckeyes are still figuring things out. It sure looked like week number one. That was, I think, the, mo- the game that most Buckeye fans watched. Notre Dame found something w- with the run game and with that offensive line. Has that been something that you have been pleased with through the first four games of the season? Yeah, I would say the running game has been strong throughout. Um, having Audric Estime as the lead back has been great. He's one of the best running backs in college football, and he's a bulldozer. He's only listed at 227 pounds. I think that's a lie. He's yeah. enormous. He's probably pushing 240, but he's been really effective. He's such a big dude that he just bounces off tacklers, and typically it takes two to three guys to bring him down. With the offensive line, the standard at Notre Dame is always going to be high. Notre Dame consistently pumps out top NFL draft draft pos- prospects along the offensive line. Guys like Quentin Nelson, Mike McGlinchey, Zach Martin, Ronnie Stanley. This year, it's Joe Walt, the starting left tackle. So the running game has been good. 
albeit against inferior competition, but going up against Ohio State's defensive line Saturday, it's going to be a big test, not just for the passing game, but also the running game. Blake Fisher on the other side is one that I know is not going to get the attention that Joe Alt's going to. However, I do believe when you have a Blake Fisher on the other side, it's going to be really hard to get to the quarterback. What is he? How has he played this year? Well, the irony of it is coming uh, coming in as recruits, Blake Fisher was the top recruit in that class for Notre Dame. He was the highest rated. He was sort of the leader of the class. And Joe Walt was literally the, the lowest rated recruit. Wow. He was actually a tight end, I think, on some services. But his dad played in the NFL, and he basically had to – Joel, I mean, he had to start about halfway through his freshman season at left tackle because of injuries, including one to Blake Fisher, who started as a true freshman, and then all just sort of burst on the scene, never looked back, and he's been great. But to your question about Fisher, I'm going to be honest. It's been somewhat of a disappointing season for him only because the expectations for him are so high. Yeah, He missed almost his entire freshman season – due to a knee injury, comes back as a sophomore, plays well. He had moved from left tackle to right tackle because Joel had solidified his position at left tackle. So then this year, first full year away from the injury, you're thinking, okay, he's going to be one of the best tackles in college football. He's been good, but he hasn't played at an elite level. And I think people are starting to wonder, is he fully healthy? Is there something wrong? And again, he's not played poorly, but when the expectations are as high as they are for him and considering his recruiting pedigree, I'll, I'll just be honest, he has not lived up to those expectations. Defensively, we got to see the Buckeyes offense a week ago explode and kind of do what a lot of people thought they could do. But also, it was a great, like, you score 35 points in one quarter, you're probably yeah. going to win that game in a very convincing fashion. Notre Dame's defense, what can we expect from them? What kind of test are they going to provide for the Buckeyes offense in a few days? It's an experienced group especially at linebacker. Notre Dame starts three fifth-year seniors at linebacker. They're getting J.D. Bertrand back. He plays the mic. Um, he's Notre Dame's most reliable, I would say, of the three. He's been around a long time. He, he was dealing with a concussion a couple weeks ago, so he missed the last game, but he'll be healthy and ready to go on Saturday. So you kind of have a lot of consistency there at linebacker. The corners are really good. Benjamin Morrison is a future NFL draft prospect. Cam Hart, uh, the fifth-year senior as well. He's a really talented athlete. He's dealt with some injuries throughout his career. And actually, thinking back to the game last season against Ohio State, Ohio State targeted Cam Hart early and often in that game. So clearly they saw something. He was dealing with a hamstring injury that he suffered in camp. So I don't know if that had something to do with it, but I'm excited to see if they try to go at him again because this year he's healthy and he's been playing a lot better. So honestly, going into this game, I would say that Notre Dame's cornerbacks are probably their biggest strength. However... I know about the Ohio State wide receivers, and all of a sudden, that strength might not be so strong when you're going up against guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Ibuka. But for those corners, this is a chance to really prove themselves on the biggest stage. Like I said, Benjamin Morrison, I think he's a future first or second round NFL draft pick. What better way to showcase that than in this game on Saturday? So it's going to be a big test. But um, as for my concerns, I would say maybe uh, the defensive line, it's not that they've been bad. They've been pretty good at stopping the run overall, but they haven't been able to bring down the quarterback as much uh, as we would have hoped. They've been able to develop some pressures and some hurries, but their sack numbers are pretty low. The tackles for loss numbers are pretty low. And obviously, if they want to have a chance to beat Ohio State this weekend, those are going to have to improve. We went through this whole conversation without talking about Marcus Freeman, the former Buckeye. Yeah. Um, he also That's a coached, first, by the dude, way, for any of these I, I know, podcasts. it's weird, man. It's really weird. Um, but also, you talk about him and being former teammates with James Lernitis. They used to coach together a year ago. Yeah. There are so many storylines with Marcus Freeman. How is he approaching this game? You know, I would love to know how he's approaching it behind closed doors. Because in front of the camera, in front of the media, he's saying all the right things. He's approaching it the right way. He's not shying away from the fact that it's a big game. But given the fact that he played at Ohio State, hell, his dad's a season ticket holder for the Buckeyes still to this day, this game means a ton to him, I'm sure. And I would love to know how he's talking about it to the staff, to the players, to his family. Because yeah. he's from Dayton, um, just a Midwestern guy, and I'm sure that he's ready to go for this one. I'm sure that he's going to have the guys ready to go because the team understands. They know how much this game means to him. So... Again, in, in front of the media, he was probably sick of all the questions. I know he was last year because he had to deal with it all offseason, mm -hmm. um, and it was the first game of the year, so that's all he was dealing with. So he 
got visibly annoyed, I would say, by the end of it, which is totally understandable. The fact that this is Notre Dame's fifth game of the season is, is pretty nice for him because he's only subjected to these questions really for one or two weeks. But I'm sure he's up for it, uh, and I'm sure that he wants this one maybe more than anyone on the entire team. Got to hear a lot. It's some good stuff coming from the Notre Dame side about how they're approaching the game and the players involved. What about the Buckeyes' point of view? We'll get that next on Locked on Buckeyes. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand, and it's simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKEDON. All right, now that we've talked a lot about Notre Dame, let's switch it over to Ohio State. And Jay, I'm just curious. How do you feel about this game going into it? Because I've seen a lot of really confident Ohio State fans, but in talking to you a little bit before we started recording here, you're confident, but maybe not quite as confident as some other fans. You're correct, man. I am. Let's backtrack. Going into the season, I was already nervous about this game. I was nervous about this game and other games as well. You add in how Notre Dame has played, and you add in some of the early season issues or hiccups the Buckeyes have had it's made my maybe anxiety or level of how nervous I am go up because as much as I want to trust Buckeyes offense Buckeyes defense Buckeyes coaching staff I haven't really been able to trust them fully as much as I would like to going into this game you add in how they played against Indiana how they played against Youngstown State um, some of the early game third down issues that the Buckeyes had This is going to be a whole lot different of a test than what the Buckeyes have ever had this season. You add in, it's on the road. You add in, it's in prime time. You add in game day, Pat McAfee show. All of all the eyeballs are going to be on South Bend, Indiana. It's making me a little bit nervous. As much as I like, I like what Denzel Burke has brought to the table. I like still Chambers and Tommy Eikenberg. There are still other Buckeyes that I that we need. Buckeye fans, Buckeye players need more from. For everyone to feel as much as confident as we would like to going into this game. But yeah, I'm nervous. Like, I'm not going to sit up here and be Buckeye Homer, like, oh, it's going to be a beat down at 85 to zero. Not going to do that. Realistically, this could very well be a one score game at the end of the season, um, win or loss one team by three points. I mean, realistically, that's what we're looking at because these are really good football teams, two of the best in the country. So when you look at the actual roster, what Notre Dame brings to the table, what are you most concerned about outside of Sam Hartman? Honestly, it's getting to the quarterback and not so much getting to the quarterback and getting sacks, but getting pressure and getting Sam Hartman off schedule. Yeah, that's my biggest thing. And we saw the Buckeyes defensive line um, get a little bit more pressure, get in the face of Austin Reed a week ago. But overall, the defensive line, unless you blitz two guys, two backers or a backer and a safety, primarily Sonny Styles, you're probably not going to get much pressure on the quarterback. And this is a game where pressure and getting your hands up and um, getting your hands in the face of the quarterback and disrupting passing lanes as a defensive lineman, being able to rush with your front four, it's going to be pivotal. So as much as outside of Sam Hartman, like he is a problem of his own, it's getting to the quarterback, getting pressure. It's not just the issues the Buckeyes have had on the D-line. It's also because of how good the Irish O-line is this year. I'm honestly surprised you said that because Ohio State's got some dudes on the defensive line. Like JT Tuo Malau, I've said this before, his game against Penn State last season was maybe one of, if not the best performances I've ever seen from a defensive lineman. The way he completely took over that game was kind of just, it's unheard of almost at the college level, but He's really good. Jack Sawyer is also very good. So personally, I'm concerned about that. So I'm surprised you said, but what gives you the most confidence? Like, what are you like? All right. You know, we have some concerns for sure. We're, we might not be as talented as we've been in recent years, but when you look at this Ohio State roster and it's specifically the matchup against Notre Dame, what are you most confident? In which matchup? Um, It's, it's going to be kind of weird. I have this weird, abnormal belief in Kyle McCord. Not that he's going to be an All-American or anything like that. 
I just believe in pressure moments. He's going to keep his poise, keep his cool, stay consistent, stay on schedule as much as he can. Now, you can't always stay on schedule, but stay on schedule as much as he can. And it's not because he's playing with his high school teammate, former high school teammate, who is also Marvin Harrison Jr., who is also the best Buckeye, one of the best players in the country. It's not that. It's not that at all. It's because of what we have seen week one, week two, week three, He's gotten better every single week in categories and areas where you can say after the game against Indiana, he needs to get better here in this category. He did it in week number two. Oh, he got he did some things against Youngstown State has to get better. He got better and showed that against Western Kentucky. And so he continues to get better. But it really, honestly, it's just his poise. This environment is going to be wild. I heard that they're going to be doing like a special light show in the game. Yeah. Um, wristbands that fans are going to have. They're going to be on the seats um, in the stadium. And then it's going to be, I don't know if it's a Katy Perry, um, Taylor Swift. Some, some one of those big artists <laughs> did some light show at one of their concerts. And it's going to be the same type of deal at this. And I'm like, look, buddy, it's going to be a different environment. Probably one that most of us have never seen before while watching a game. you got to stay cool, calm, and collected. And I believe Kyle McCord is able to do that in this game. Yeah, let's talk more about McCord because personally, I thought it was interesting how Ryan Day had, handled the quarterback competition, letting it bleed into the season a little bit, and then giving McCord all the first team reps. It was clear that you know his actions spoke louder than words, and he believed in Kyle McCord and thought that he was the better player and would make less mistakes come game time. What are some of the things that he struggled with early on in the season that he's improved upon up to this point? Week one, it was just missing throws that you think he could make or you thought, like, hey, you're a quarterback at, at Ohio State. You can make some of these throws. Some of them were high. Um, some of them were low, which one was the completion to Marvin Harrison Jr., but it was clear Jr. had to go low to get the ball before it hit the ground. Um, one of it was on the outstretched arms of Travion Henderson. So it's just like making some of those throws that should be routine. And he made them. Now, also in the moment, you did see that he did have a big arm. He could throw from one hash to the front corner of the end zone. Um, far hash, that is. So it's like he can make some throws, but it was more of the the every down throws. Like, can you turn first and 10 to second and two because you're dropping it back and making the right read and accurately throwing the football? And he's been able to do that. And so the, that, there, that there alone is going to be huge. Because you're going to have to be able to go from first and 10 to second and three, um, maybe first and 15 to uh, second and five. Why? Because those these things might happen. And if Ryan Day is going to call a pass play on first down, one, he believes his quarterback can make the throw. But two, the quarterback has to believe he has the ability and capability to make that throw as well. Not only thinking it, but also doing it and applying what you know into practice and the action on the field. So Kyle McCord has been a pleasant surprise, but I'm with you, man. Like. This quarterback battle really didn't seem like one. I heard a college football analyst in the offseason discuss the quarterback competition at Ohio State and only mentioned Kyle McCord's name. And I was like, wait, there's two quarterbacks. I don't know what he's told behind closed doors. Like, I, I have no idea. But when we see what went down on the field, it definitely seemed like it was Kyle McCord's job to lose, not a true quarterback competition. But honestly, to me, he's earned the right to be called QB1 in Columbus. He is a good quarterback, and uh, I'm excited to see how he handles a big stage in South Bend. It does seem like he's getting better at letting the defense dictate what he does and sort of just taking what the off or taking what the defense gives you because with a coach like Ryan Day, you're you're going to be put into some really good positions. You just have to make the right reads. And I can actually think of a play against Youngstown State. I think it was like a third and 11. And uh, he sort of forced the ball to Emeka Ibuka in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he had a defender draped all over him. If he had just looked to the right, he had the curl route there. The safety was giving it to him. But then against Western Kentucky, every time there was a right read to make, it felt like he was making the right one. So <laughs> there's obviously improvement there. It'll be interesting to see what Al Golden and the Notre Dame defense dial up to try to confuse him and try to put him in some interesting spots. But I do want to talk about the Ohio State defense because uh, I've been hearing the silver bullets are back. Tommy Eichenberg, brother of former Notre mm -hmm. Dame tackle Liam Eichenberg. And uh, I don't think I'm breaking any news here. Liam wasn't exactly pleased that Notre Dame did not recruit Tommy as hard as they did and clearly should have, should have because he's proven to be a really capable college player. But when you look at the Ohio State defense going up against the Notre Dame offense, we've talked a little bit about the defensive line. 
What's going on with the Ohio State secondary? I know that they're they recruit really well every year and uh, they're loaded with speed and athleticism. But how do you think they'll fare going up against Notre Dame's passing attack? Honestly, going into the game, if this were week one, I'd be extremely, extremely nervous. But the way that Denzel Burke has played, the Buckeyes coach is realizing having Sonny Styles on the field during obvious passing situations is not the best because your personnel on the sidelines is better for that situation on the football field. Bringing in Jordan Hancock, Davis and Igbenos and the Ole Miss transfer playing good ball. He's going to get picked on because people don't really want to throw Denzel Burke's way, but he's going to get picked on it. He's been doing a good job so far. I'll say the biggest surprise to me is Josh Proctor. Coming into the season, I didn't expect him to start. I thought Jihad Carter, the Syracuse transfer, would come in and start right away. But Josh Proctor has been a guy who has been very, very big in the run, like overall, just coming down and, and bringing um, hard hits in the run game, run-stopping game, or um, almost got an interception a week ago. And I'm like, dude, to hit both your paws, just catch it. But <laughs> there's a reason why he's playing defense. Yeah. Um, I am someone that, I'm higher on this defensive secondary than normal because through three games, it's been one of the bright spots, bright units, best units of the entire team. Okay, real quick before we get to predictions. Has anyone checked Sonny Styles' birth certificate? Because Notre Dame was recruiting him really hard, and then when he picked Ohio State, that really was such a bummer for Notre Dame and the entire recruiting operation. Then he reclassified, and now when I see him, I'm like, that dude is not even 20 years old. He looks like a linebacker, and yet he's playing nickel. Did you sound like me? Because when I saw him, he was, I think, early in his junior season, um, junior junior year of school. It was beginning of the football season there. And I'm like, wait, ain't no way this kid is 17 <laughs> years no old way. and he's a junior. I, I understand 6'4", 220, but most people that I know that are 6'4", 220 don't look like that in high school. Excuse me. Don't look like that in their entire life. <laughs> and he's 17 years old, and then he comes in. And the reclassification thing is interesting because it's always one of those, are you making the right decision? We saw Quinn Ewers do it. Seeing Sonny Styles do it, we're going to see others do it as well. Sonny Styles seems like it was the right decision for him. Like it was abnormal for me to hear it and think, oh, it was the right decision because I didn't think that. It's abnormal for me to feel that it was the right decision now. But ultimately, Tyler, I do think it was the right decision because he got to school early, got to get on that Buckeye program, got to get on their uh, weight training and nutrition and all that stuff. Year two, sophomore, 18 years old playing good football, man. And I'm glad he's on the team and uh, he's been a bright spot for the defense this year. Yeah. He's an incredible athlete. And uh, I guess one thing with the re reclassification is usually it's because the body needs more time to develop. It looks like Sonny's pretty <laughs> developed. I actually saw a picture of him standing next to his older brother, Lorenzo, and he literally dwarfs him. So yeah. now that we've covered kind of both sides of the story here, Notre Dame and Ohio state coming up after this, we'll get to some predictions. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action because the app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And look, I know it's not the NFL, but you know what pick I'm giving out this week. As a rule, I only bet on Notre Dame when they're underdogs, and right now they're plus 136 to win outright on Saturday against the Buckeyes. So if you risk $100, you'll get $136 back if the Irish get the win. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. This game, Tyler, it's one of those that I say, I've been saying it all show. All lies will be on South Bid. Every single person that loves a sport will probably either be watching the game or have an eye on their phone about what the score is going to be. Before I unveil my prediction, though, I think kind of what's at stake for the Buckeyes, it's really proven to yourselves and everybody in the country that you belong in the top five, top four, top three conversation in the entire country. Early season issues, yeah, they were there. You still won the games. Western Kentucky, was that a fluke? Probably not, but you're going to have to go out and show it offensively, defensively, coaches. If we get Ryan Day, the way the same Ryan Day that we got against Georgia Buckeyes win, if we get Ryan Day that's coming out and not showing that aggression, there's a good chance the Buckeyes lose. For the Buckeyes, this is a great proving test for themselves and to see kind of um, what they're made of. Because this is not a game you're going to get. I think this is only the, I think I checked, the eighth time. I think I said six on the show recently. Yeah, I think it's like the that. eighth eighth time these two these two schools have ever played in the history. Sounds odd when they're not that far away geographically, but I'm here for it. And uh, I think the Buckeyes can really prove and show everybody um, what they're made of in this contest. 
Yeah, if there's one thing we could take away from this home and home is that these two teams need to play each other more often. And hopefully we get some more matchups uh, down the road because last year, despite the loss, the lead up and everything going into it was a ton of fun. And uh, I'm so excited for this game. As for Notre Dame and what's at stake, uh, I mean, it, it's hard to it's it's hard to oversell it, honestly, because Notre Dame has played in big games before. They've been embarrassed in some big games before. And there's certainly a reputation around the program that they can't compete with the big dogs. And now is a perfect time to demonstrate to the entire country that not only can you play with these teams at the at, the, at Ohio State's level and, you know, Alabama and Georgia and other teams who have been at the top of the sport for years, but that you can actually beat them on the field for 60 minutes. I don't think there's ever going to be a situation where Notre Dame is consistently able to out recruit class after class for a variety of different reasons. but it's a rare instance where I think Notre Dame has the better quarterback, which has not been the case mm -hmm. in a really long time. And right. a quarterback that is capable of winning at the highest level yeah. in Sam Hartman. So there is a little bit of a, you know, if not now, when sort of sentiment, at least that I'm feeling about this game. I mean, this is going to be Sam Hartman's 50th start in college football, and it is going to be Kyle McCord's fourth. And I know how talented of a player, uh, McCord was especially coming out of high school. He was a top 50 recruit in the country, but still uh, there's no substitute for experience. And with having with with Sam Hartman in tow, the way he's been playing, the team that's built around him, it's all setting up for Notre Dame to finally get over the hump and beat a big, big team like this. But they're going to have to get it done on Saturday. You know, down the road, you talk about these two teams playing more often. It'd be great if Notre Dame would join the Big Ten and make, it, <laughs> make that a whole lot easier to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not making any predictions there. Uh, I would think it would make more sense, even for the Big Ten, to go out there and already say, hey, we already got the NBC deal. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you to join us than, yeah. uh, than to join the join the ACC if you want to. Geographically, I understand like ACC doesn't make sense, but – Dude, we could do two more podcasts on this. I promise you, <laughs> dude. I'm here, man. It would have been a great off season little build up for the for this game here. We didn't think about it, but no, um, dude, I really wish they played more. I do. It, I, 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 I I talk to people all the time, and I'm like, this sport, I love it, but it's weird. There are two teams that are this close together, and they've only played, I think, seven times total. It's going to be eight here soon. The first time was in the 30s, and then you got a cluster of them between the nineties and like 2018, 17, whatever it was. Yeah. And I'm like, or last year as well. It's like, wait, why don't they play more? Um, Don't ask me. I don't make decisions. Uh, I wish I did. I would have hey, it every year. I lived in Cleveland. Uh, I grew up there. So I know a lot of Ohio state fans. I've got a lot of Ohio state fans in my own family. So this game means a lot to me and I wish they do it more. Tyler, who wins the game? So, I try to be as unbiased as I could on this, but I really do think that this is finally the year when Notre Dame pulls it off. I think Notre Dame wins 31 to 28. I think it's going to be super close. And I think that ultimately in the end, the biggest difference is going to be experience between the quarterbacks. I think when the game gets tight at the end, Notre Dame is going to force Kyle McCord into making one or two critical mistakes that will basically decide the game. And I do think Ohio State is going to give Sam Hartman everything he can handle. He's certainly been mistake prone in the past. He has not thrown an interception this year, knock on wood, but he's probably due. So I could see that happening, but I think it's going to be a back and forth battle throughout. And it is going to take every last second of those 60 minutes for Notre Dame to pull this off. But in the end, I do think they win. I think it's going to be, you know, arguably the biggest win for Notre Dame in my entire life. And I'm 27, which is crazy <laughs> to think about, but I'm going to be at that game. Uh, I'm going to be a nervous wreck throughout but I can't wait for it. And uh, no matter what, I just think it's going to come down to the wire. Dude, I'm thinking more 34, 31 Notre Dame. Uh, I go into the, I went to the <laughs> season and I said, Ohio state is probably not going undefeated. I also didn't expect Notre Dame to be this good at this point in the season. I think the extra game helps him out a lot. We've only got really got one game where the Buckeyes offense looks like what we expect the Buckeyes offense to be. And it's not so much like, the 35 points in a quarter. It's just how crisp they were during that quarter and the other portions of the game. My biggest hiccup, can the Buckeyes run the ball consistently? And that's one of them. Can they stop Sam Hartman to slow him down during crucial points in the game? I think the secondary will be fine. I don't know if they want to get the pass rush needed. And I don't know if Ryan Day is going to run the ball enough with the way that I, he has ran the ball this year for the Buckeyes to be able to 
keep the defense honest. If you want to come out there and say, hey, Irish, the Buckeyes are going to throw the ball 35 times, it's going to be a whole lot easier. 35, 40 times, it's easy for that defense to try to figure out how to slow them down. 34, 31, um, it makes me feel really weird saying that. But it's weird, though, because I do know 34, 31, the Buckeyes can still beat Michigan, can still win the conference and go to the playoff. This kind of doesn't really give me 2014 vibes because this team, I think, is different than that team for the Ohio State. But, man, I just – I think it being on the road yeah, and we don't know what version of Ryan Day we're going to get, it's not a good recipe for the Buckeyes to win. Yeah, it's, it's sort of how I look at it. Until you actually see it, it's hard to believe it. And with Kyle McCord, you haven't really seen him do it yet, so I can understand why it's a little hard to believe that he can actually go into a hostile environment – like he's going to be facing on Saturday and come out with a win. But I am not going to doubt him at all until I actually see it. I'm just saying it from your perspective. I, I understand your concerns. But when he's got Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Buka, we haven't even mentioned Fleming, who's another son. He'd probably be – he would be wide receiver one at Notre Dame. So it's going to be one hell of a battle. It will be, man. Guys, this is fun. Um, check out Tyler Wojak. At, on Twitter, excuse me, on X, at Tyler Wojcik. You can check me out on Twitter, at jstevens07. And we're both going to be active this weekend. Um, fun watching the game. Hoping, I do hope the Buckeyes win. <laughs> hope my prediction is wrong. I hope Tyler thinks his prediction is right. And uh, guys, thank you for tuning in to this Locked On Buckeyes and Locked On Irish crossover. Look forward to watching the game this weekend. It should be a good one. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. All right, that's going to do it for me today, and we are one day closer to Saturday. I cannot wait. Thanks again for making this your first listen of the day. Remember to like the video below and subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube, and please rate, review the podcast as well. And remember, get your mailbag questions in. Send them in on Twitter, at LockdownIrish, or on Instagram, at LockdownIrishPod, and give my personal Twitter account a follow, too, at Tyler, W-O-J-C-I-A-K. I'll see you guys tomorrow.